Hello once again, dear learners, you are welcome to GCL Tutorials. This is a platform we make social studies simple and learning in general also very easy for you as a student. Now we are back here on this particular platform again and I welcome you. It's a pleasure though and I thank you for subscribing to this channel and also make sure you share with other people out there. If this is the first time you are watching, don't worry, scroll down, check the subscription button and also do well to subscribe. All right, what are we discussing today? So I have something on rivers, rivers, rivers. So this particular episode, I want to talk about the aspect of geography. Okay, very, very important. We've been looking at the solar system. I've given a lot of info concerning that. We solved some questions too as well and we've also seen the areas of rocks we've seen longitude and latitudes now let's come to one important feature on earth mountains are formed through tectonic movements and then um, activities like folding faulting and even volcanic eruptions here we are let's look at after these features or landforms are created there is something that can happen to any of its layers talking about what actually flows from down there we have established clearly under the structure of the earth that we are living on the crust which is the top up outermost part of the earth under the crust there is water okay and there is the mantle before you get to the outer core and the inner core. So the water in between the crust and the mount mantle can flow when it gets a space or a hole or a channel. And this channel could be the vents, okay, of the volcanic eruption. If you have the idea or you don't, the video is still there on volcanic eruption. You get it and watch, you see what we call the vents, the channel or the hole created when the magma flows and appears to become lava on the surface of the crust or, or the earth. So when these holes are created inside or beneath the earth or within the, the crust, they can cause the water flowing in between the crust and the mantle to appear on the earth's surface. And this could flow down to lowlands and become rivers. So what then uh, are rivers or how can we define a river? So a river can be defined as a huge mass of flowing water, okay? Having its source from a highland, a huge mass of flowing water having its source from a highland. So if it doesn't have a source, the flowing will cease because as time goes on, it will dry up and when it gets uh, cut off, temperature becomes high, it will cease to be a river or we will not find it at that place anymore. So here we look at when we see these things happening, how does the feature look like? So I'm not going to just bring you a picture out of um, <laughs> nothing and then just say this is how the whole thing looks like. Yes, I'll show you pictures and at the same time I'm going to show my student because I always want to go to the board and show you how to sketch these things. In case you have been asked to describe the parts of the flowing river or the features created in the course of the flowing, you should be able to sketch that in an exam and get good marks for the diagram and also for the description or the words you use to paint the pictures. Alright, so let's go to the board and I'm going to do that. So I have to show the source first and I indeed said that in the definition, I mentioned that the source is from or on a highland. Okay, so when I come here, I will sketch my highland. This is the highland. Then I'm going to show this part. This is the land. So I have my land here. Then this is the crust. So the crust is the surface. So you label this as your crust. That's the outermost part where we live. And there is a highland that has been formed. Through this highland, we have a crater. 
sorry, events leading to a creator at the top, the opening at the top. So now it has allowed or given the chance or created a path for the water down there to flow onto the surface. As it flows onto the surface, it will fall and it will become what we call waterfall. So it will fall and then get to the lowland and flow straight to wherever, depending on the distance. Then I'm going to put this here to show that most rivers flow and continue, they will enter the sea. Most of them, not all rivers, but most of them enter the sea. Some also enter or join other rivers in the course of the flow. So I am indicating this here, these lines here, crooked lines, to show the sea. To show the sea. Alright, so now let's have, let's come back to the, this is the highland. So I have the highland here. Then I'll look at this part as a source. The source. Good. From the source. Now let me come down to the surface. This becomes a waterfall. So a waterfall can be a very key feature. As it flows from the source, it meets with the sea. The part where it meets with the sea is called the mouth. The mouth of the river. That's the mouth of the river. The point at which the river enters or meets with the sea. So most of the times, they don't mix up with the sea because the sea's salinity or salt level is higher. Okay, has salt. And this one does not. So they cannot mix up. They cannot mix up. So there is a force there that causes them to separate. But it will definitely meet before that separation will occur. The part, that point where the meeting takes place is the mouth of it. When the mouth is broad, it becomes, we call it an estuary. When it is broad, we call it an estuary. That's a broad or wide mouth of a river. Okay, if that is well understood, then let's come to other features we see. If it happens that a smaller river or any other river joins this one, this one has become the main one now because it's on the lowland. If it joins the main one, so I'll indicate it here with two other crooked lines. A smaller river joining this main one. So you should be able to do this on a drawing sheet or an A4 sheet or plain sheet. Okay. Then, we'll, there is a name given to the smaller river. We call them tributaries. So I humorously call it tributaries to make the spelling very simple for me. So tributaries. If it is just one river, it is a tributary ending with a Y, not I E S. This is for the plural. So, a tributary is a small river joining a main one. Small river joining a main one. When it joins it, it will also meet the river at a point. It will also meet the river at a point. So, I will label this part as A, this feature, this part as B, then I will come to the C. Then the C, I'll call it, or it's called the meeting point, confluence. Confluence. So the confluence becomes the meeting point of two rivers. The meeting point of two rivers. Or some people can also describe it as a point where the smaller river meets a bigger one or a larger one. Okay. Now, let's move further. As this flows, the main river flows, it could split itself into smaller ones because of the um, landfall, the nature of the land. The land is not uniformly plain, okay? So you can't have a smooth movement where it will just move through one channel and then go and meet with the sea. No, it can split to other places. Sometimes the river carries a lot of loads. The loads are the impurities, the things, broken branches, um, of plants and then we can also have 
mud itself, stones, and even sometimes when it is passing through an urban center, it's likely uh, to be um, made dirty or to be contaminated with uh, um, these refuse, polythene bags, and so on and so forth. All these things can cause the movement of the water or the river to slow down, and it can cause it to split uh, to other places. When it splits and generates into different or smaller rivers, we call those ones distributaries. Distributaries. So we call these ones distributaries. So opposite of, so just like opposite of it. So tributaries are the ones joining. The distributaries are the ones that are being separated, okay, out of the larger one. You do get it. So just like saying something is distributing itself. Distributaries. All right. So we have the distributaries here. Then we can also um, talk about. Um, we've mentioned source. We've mentioned tributaries. We've mentioned uh, distributaries. We've mentioned confluence. So let me use D. Wow. D for the distributaries. A for the source. B for the tributaries. C for the confluence. D for the distributaries. Then I'll use E for the mouth or estuary. E for the mouth or estuary. I think the alphabet, some of them, especially with this C and the E for the estuary, the wide mouth of the river, and then the D can also give us a lot of clue, okay, and help us to always remember these parts of the river. So when a river is flowing from a source, which is a highland or mountain, it can lead or meet the sea elsewhere. And these features can be created or generated. So a waterfall can be formed here, or a gorge or a canyon can also be formed on this surface. Okay, in another lesson, I'll be bringing you the course of a river. As a river flows, what are the course, the path on which it flows? And we'll mention more features in that regard. So this is a very brief lesson I've brought to you on the parts or the features of a river. Special one. This is good for the final year students who are preparing for their exams. Makes things very easy for you when you are to describe. You can always remember. If you are not to illustrate with a diagram, you can tell what a source is, what a tributary is, what a confluence is, what a mouth or an estuary, and what a distributary is. Okay, I think this lesson um, helps a lot and you have achieved a lot. I'll be coming your way again with another interesting one. Take care and bye for now. Keep watching GCL tutorials. Thanks.